I also, it, it's a place where you can start a band and play. Everybody's in a band. Yeah, everybody I everybody know is, is, in a band, is in a band. Or used to be in a band or is about to be in a band. It's close knit enough yet uh, <clears throat> eclectic enough in its scene to host a diverse array of music and people doing what they want to do and, and finding a, a niche in it, you know? And I think there is a general sense among everyone here that they're glad they're here right now doing this. Everyone's oh, yeah. more than stoked on it and it's it's unique in that sense. Everyone's just having a great time. I think it also makes it unique because of our geographical situation. I mean, we're just sort of like this isolated island with a college. You have a lot of educated people. We're not that big of a city and you have this <coughs> huge saturation of musicians in this one kind of isolated spot. And that is going to lend to the, the uniqueness too. When you're separated kind of from the rest of, you know, America, you tend to uh, create something that's unique as opposed to the same watered down crap that you hear like on the radio or on MTV or whatever. Instead of it all sounding the same, it, it, it stays local and it diversifies within its own region. I think in some ways like the, the aspect of just being like cultured enough, like being not, it's isolated feeling like an island kind of in a sense, like like it's isolated from the rest of the United States in a, it's like the in a way. Kind of. Yeah, but at the same time, it's cultured enough to like not be totally ignorant. People saying that they moved to Bellingham to play music yeah. because they know that there's a lot of a lot of people playing music around here and there's a lot of opportunities to be creative. There's I think it's, it's got the home, homely feeling too. There's you go around in the summer, there's people riding bikes, uh, a lot of community activities, everybody knows their neighbor here. You go out, you see the people in the community, you see every day walking down the street saying hi to them, you go out, and it's fun. It's like family, get together when you go out and see a band around here. And Josh is like the third cousin. Of I that's right. Yeah. Small town, or small enough town, so most everyone in a band knows everyone else in a band. Or knows everyone else that's in bands. It's nice. It's really cool. It's a good family. Yeah. You end up meeting everybody else that plays music, and um, everybody's just really into, as far as I can tell, um, entertaining each other and having fun. We had the best intentions when we started shooting. Unfortunately, we didn't have the best equipment. There were many trials and errors when it came to using different microphones, and often our audio picked up more camera noise than interview answers. Of course, the real issue was the live performances, which were mostly distorted. We found that the best method was to attach a vocal mic to the top of the camera during shows, until one day our production almost came to a halt when we forgot to bring our rubber band attachment. Luckily, we we're very resourceful with tape and paper clips.
any band that has gone out on the road and seen other towns will come back here and appreciate the fact that there is a place like the 3B, uh, which is one of the best bars in the, in the country, if not the world. The 3B is a kick-ass place. Aaron's one of the best fucking guys. The bands get paid well. It's always a fun time. Free beer. You know, no attitude. It's fun. And like, church fucking goes in session on Friday and Saturday night at the 3B. We all fucking go there. And we all uh, get drunk and have a good time. Sure. Uh, I've seen some of the best shows I've ever seen in my life there, so... Yeah, definitely. They, they draw really good bands. And, you know, not only bands that have, uh, you know, a big name or a big record or a lot of publicity or, you know, just good bands. So, you know, he does a good job over there bringing good bands in. Not only does it give you the opportunity to see the way bands in Tucson are doing what they're doing, but it also gives you a chance to play with those bands, meet those bands, and go, hey, we're going to go to Tucson. Maybe we can do a show together. I mean, it's just another stop along the way, and it really is. It's a world-class bar. It's one of the best bars in the world. I mean, bands that come through here all the time. And it hasn't gotten that way because Aaron doesn't give a shit. He works really hard. And, you know, I'm just real thankful that it's here. And it'll be sad if we lose it. I don't think there's much chance of that now, but I certainly wouldn't blame him at some point just if he threw his hands up and went, ah, I'm going to make corn dogs, you know. Because it's a pretty thankless job. Seventh sign when that place goes down, man. <laughs> yeah. We might as well just, you know, drink some wacky Kool-Aid and world. die in droves in the front door. Oftentimes, uh, um, all ages or underground culture likes to demonize the uh, the bar scene to a somewhat uh, huge extent. But you know, the bars in Bellingham are doing a a job of um, do a pretty good job of allowing um, music that isn't uh, exactly in the mainstream to get a wide audience and uh, I think that's really important. I like that all the bars all have all are open to having different styles of music like one bar sure, isn't you can go just see strictly you know one thing you know and they keep it open you know it's like there's not a funk bar and a country bar and a mm. rock bar. I I really think it's cool to just go out on a Monday or Tuesday night and go into the factory and see who's playing there because, you know, they might be total crap, but it's something that you wouldn't, you have no idea what to expect, you know, which is a lot of times where you run into the best bands when you just totally least expect it. It's really the only spot young bands can play, I think, like to, you know, to adults, you know, other than like some house party somewhere or whatever. You know, it's just kind of yeah. like a, like a, Springboard, you know, it's a good spot to start because you'll definitely get a show, and eventually you might, you know, get a get a good crowd in there. Well, one one of the cool things about the factory is like anybody can get a show at the factory. You just have to call up Tom and you have a show. It's made it's made a huge difference. It seems like like local bands three or four nights a week, being able to have that split cover thing with the three B, you know, being having for Memorial Day, Day weekend, like 16 bands over the whole weekend. Having All Brent local Cole bands. Set up Brent Cole, kind of I mean, absolutely. fucking kicks ass. If without He's what's up and Brent support. Cole right now, there would this music scene would be the same as it was like, you know, five years ago, where there was actually that's not true. It does seem like there's more better bands right now, but I think part of the reason that there is is because they're getting exposure and therefore they're getting like, you know, like a friendly competition kind of thing. It's not like yeah, my van's better than you. We're gonna run you over in my truck or something. It's just like brown van. Brown van, exactly. Yeah, no, it's just like uh, because there's more exposure, there's more people paying attention to what the bands are doing because of you know having a having a zine in town and stuff makes people want to be a little more serious about making music or something like that. It's sure. getting easier to book. Yeah, I'm getting more interest. Lots of people want to play. There's lots a lot of, of interest from Seattle. There's lots of bands Seattle that just come out of the woodwork here too that you never hear of. You bring bands there all the time and 
I s I've never even heard of it. I like energy. That's all I'm looking for. If, they, if, if you have energy and a demo, <laughs> you come and you talk to me. So what, what do you mean energy? Is that like well, I mean, just, you know, you can't, uh, you just got to keep, I have no energy. I will not pick up the phone and call you back or whatever. You just got to keep calling me. If you can talk to me on the phone, get me to write something down, tell me your band name, I'll write it down on a date. I mean, sometimes I call back, email, whatever. Try to do my job. Very inefficient. <laughs> but I'm getting better. That's good. Tell I just need a desk.